This is DRF, Race of the Day. Hi, everybody. Dan Oman, Mike Beer, the DRF Race of the Day for Saturday, July the 10th. Race number nine at Belmont Park. Three graded stakes races on tap at Belmont on Saturday, but the feature is the grade one Belmont Derby. We throw up the field of three-year-olds getting set to go a mile and a quarter on the inner turf. One million dollars is the purse, and you can download free Formulator Pass performances for this race on the Race of the Day event page at drf.com. International flavor, as always, in the Grade 1 Belmont Derby, Mike. You've got the beaten favor in the Epsom Derby, Bolshoi Ballet, 7 of 5 for the familiar team, Aiden O'Brien, Ryan Moore. Yeah, it seems like I'll weigh the horse to beat, right, Dan? I mean, I supposedly came out of that Epsom Derby where, let's be honest, he was disappointing. Um, but came out of it with some excuses, according to his connections. So we'll see how he rebounds. His prior two starts, his first two starts as a three-year-old, he was very impressive winning those. Seems like a very handy horse as well. Not like one of those typical European horses that are dullards out of the gate and then have to make up a lot of ground with a furious stretch kick. We won't have his chiclet on the Timeform U.S. pace projector. There's no pace data for European horses. The Timeform U.S. folks have this race as a fast pace. I don't think it'll be fast. I think it could be somewhat contested, but not necessarily fast. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's hard to to predict fast paces and turf races around here, Dan, because they just don't ride the races that way. Um, we'll see where these horses uh, wind up going. The four, five, and six, they're all, you know, horses of some ability and some upside. I, I feel like um, certainly the five and the six are major players in this race. We'll see where, uh, what positions they take up early. A horse that is hoping time form U.S.'s fast-paced scenario is correct is the number one Palazzi. This horse is a stakes winner already this year at Sam Houston, coming off a runner-up effort in the Autobahn most recently, but he's already been beaten by Cellist. He's already been beaten by Dujour. He did beat Hidden Enemy back at the fairgrounds last year. He's a consistent horse, but he's the kind of horse that needs a little pace help. Yeah, we'll see how the race sets up for him, and then we'll see what kind of trip um, he can get in this race. Obviously, when you just look at him on paper, he has to improve um, in order to contend with these horses. I, you know, personally feel like he's a little bit underrated. Um, you go back and watch the Autobahn last time. He had no chance in there. Uh, Chalice, who wound up winning that race, crawled on the slowest of paces while this horse sat inside. He actually ran very well, I thought, to make it as close as he did. And I thought he ran fine in the American turf, too. That pace was a little faster. Uh, but having post-14 really hurt his chances. You know, they had to take him all the way back. He basically had no chance in there either, Dan, and I thought he ran a deceptively good race. I urge everybody to watch the reboot of Out of the Gate this week. We'll show Bolshoi Ballet's win in the Derenstown Stud Derby Trial, two back. And Mike, he just sat off the pace setter, took over three furlongs to go, made this electric move to open up into the stretch, and then kept right on going. And in the Epsom Derby, I just don't think he handled the ground. I think the mile and a half was a little far for him. And I also think it wasn't his day. Yeah, those things are probably all true. It's, you're right. His Darrenstown stud two back, he was really impressive that uh, in that race. And you're right about um, his running style. You know, he just isn't that typical European. They He has a very handy style. He gets up close to the pace. He always travels strongly. Um, and he really finishes as well. His, his Epsom Derby, I mean, we'll see how he bounces out. I, again, O'Brien says he has excuses. He came out of it sore, all that stuff. We'll see if that's legit. Um, I agree with you that the ground could be an excuse. And it's also worth pointing out, he got one of those, you know, three wide uncovered trips all the way around the track until the upper stretch. He made a little bit of a run before he flattened out. I mean, it, it was a disappointing performance, but it wasn't, you know, terrible. Uh, we've had some thunderstorms in the New York area over the week. Not sure how it's going to play out on Saturday. Does the prospect of softer ground worry you with Bolshoi Ballet, considering the Epsom Derby was good to soft, the uh, saint Clou race as a two-year-old over heavy ground, and those were kind of the two bad races? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to worry about that stuff. We'll see what the what the ground looks like, and we'll see how it affects him. You know, personally, I thought his race in France last year, the Group 1 as a two-year-old, I mean, he didn't win that race. I didn't think he ran poorly, and I didn't think he had, you know, a ground excuse in there. He just bumped into some horses who were a little better than him at that time. Safe conduct, the number three, was washed off last time out in the Pennine Ridge. But we'll go back to his turf victory two starts back at a huge price. Safe conduct was 38 to 1. He got right up close to the pace. He's going to put away 6-1 to one restored order, and he's going to keep about his business with an 87 buyer speed figure competitive among the United States-based horses. This is a horse that's done little wrong on turf for Phil Serpy, Mike. 
Uh, yeah, true. He looked really good winning this race. I know he was a big price in here, um, but this felt like at the time anyway, and we'll see how it all pans out. It felt like a pretty strong allowance race for three-year-olds. And this horse was fairly dominant winning. He got right up close to the pace. You saw how he finished the race off. I wasn't sold on him going into that race, Dan. I thought he sort of got lucky to break his maiden first time on turf at Saratoga last year. He got away with a very soft pace in there and wired that field. Um, but he's obviously improved. If he can, you know, take a step forward off of that win that we just watched, he can contend in here. St. Hood won the grade three Pennine Ridge, the off the turf version. That was a race following the Kentucky Derby where the connection simply took a shot. He has run well on synthetic. His runner up effort on the Jeff Ruby stakes was just fine. To me, he just seems like the kind of horse who's going to appreciate this distance. It's all about whether he's going to appreciate turf against this caliber of competition. He's bred for the grass. Yeah, and they've been, you know, Pletcher has been trying to get him on grass. He really wants to run him on this surface. Um, so we'll see if it makes any difference. He does have a versatile pedigree. He's not my kind of horse, Dan. Um, his overall form is fine. He does have some ability, and I won't be surprised when he handles turf, but he better be a lot better as a grass horse than he is as a dirt or synthetic horse if he's going to beat this field. You get a price on Rosario and Pletcher on a horse that might be able to make the lead with the grinding styles to stay. The five is Dujour. Let's go back to Dujour's sort of breakout performance. Two starts back. This is at Santa Anita. He's only in against a three-horse field. He gets to a fairly easy lead. He just draws away very nicely to win this race with an 86 buyer speed figure. His then-trainer, Bob Baffert, sent him to Churchill Downs. And Mike, you couldn't have gotten a better trip or ride than what Flavia and Pratt gave Dujour in the American turf. Yeah, that's true. I mean, everything really worked out for him in there. I'll give him this horse a little bit of credit, though, Dan, because he was down inside on the backstretch. He got held up a little bit on the backstretch in there, but I like the way he held his position at that point, and then he moved up when things opened up for him once again in the American turf. He finished very strongly. I mean, every one of his turf starts so far, this horse really kicks for home. I, I like that about him, and it makes me feel like stretching out in distance isn't going to be a problem. He's tactical. The distance might be within his scope. It'll be interesting to see if he does handle, given the ground being based in Southern California. He's not used to that at all. The six is hard love. This is a very talented horse that was in against a salty group of older runners last time out at Belmont. Let's watch that race. A mile and an eighth for trainer Jonathan Thomas. He got right up close to the pace, and this is a real dog fight for hard love. He battles all the way down to the wire. It looks like he's not going to get there, but he does. And this race graded out fast, a 92 buyer. Yeah, I like this performance from him, Dan. He was supposed to prep in the Pennine Ridge. And once that race came off, they ran him here against older horses. I, I thought he ran well in here. I mean, I don't think, you know, it was a field full of superstar older horses, but there were some good horses in there. Um, and this horse was very game to win it. He improved again. It made it seem like, you know, the added distance there was no problem for him. And now they're going to stretch him out again. I mean, I'm still, I can't say that I'm completely sold on him yet, but this horse is good. Tokyo Gold, the number seven, got a little bit of class relief shipping out of France into the Italian Derby last time out. He blew him away in the Italian Derby. Let's watch that race right now. You're going to see Tokyo Gold. This is what's known as widest and fastest at Campanelle, winning very, very easily, Mike, by four lengths. This horse obviously has a little bit of ability. He has a strong kick. I'm curious to see if he could do it against better competition. I think this is a better field. Yeah, I agree. I'm not sure what he was beating here. He was pretty impressive winning, though. Um, he had to sort of give away some position there, too, Dan, just to get to the outside and get clear. Um, but, man, he was under a big hold for a long way in that race before they took him outside, and he won very easily. I don't know what he was beating. It feels like this, is, this has to be a tougher field for him, but he was good last time. You mentioned tell cellist's easy win in the Autobahn, easy pace in the Autobahn last time out. When he was walked the dog over good going, you're right about those fractions. 116, Julian Leper was just an ace when getting a horse on the lead, and cellist was able to hold off perhaps an unlucky Palazzi. Let's go back to his race two starts back, however, because it shows the cellist might be a little bit more versatile. He made a big mid-race move to take command in this race after a slow start, and he fights hard, Mike. He only gets beat a nose here. He did a lot of work in this race. Yeah, he probably should be coming into this Belmont Derby on a three race winning streak. He was best in here. He just happened not to win. Um, didn't break sharply from the gate, and he wound up last early. And as you mentioned, he just made, you know, his rider, I think Leperu maybe did the right thing. He just went with an early move up the backstretch, took that race over. And unfortunately for him, he got gunned down at the end, but he ran really well too back. 
Um, I think he's got to improve again, Dan. But that race that we just watched makes me feel like he's better than the Autobahn even makes him makes him look. Can you make an argument, Mike, that the nine hidden enemy, although he has to improve, is a little bit dirtied up? I mean, he won his maiden at the fairgrounds. In that American turf, he was outside while Dujour saved ground. And last time out in the Autobahn, like Palazzi, was kind of held up behind the slow pace set by Cellist. Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly think you could make those arguments. Um, he finally got the maiden win there off that little layoff back in March. It took him a while to get it, but he finally broke through. I thought he ran fine in the American turf, Dan. He made a, a wide run in that race. I thought all in all that was an okay fourth place uh, finish. Um, and in the Autobahn last time, you know, he did get caught over behind horses and he was in tight through the stretch. I I couldn't convince myself that it really cost him that much, but he did get in tight uh, in the stretch trying to rally. Maybe he's a little underrated, but man, how is he supposed to beat this field? I don't think he's run a race yet that's going to give him a real chance in here. Top pick time for the grade one Belmont Derby. Bolshoi Ballet, if he runs back to that race two starts back, the turn of foot that he showed in that race, he's going to be very tough for these horses to beat. Dujour, your second pick, is my top selection. He did get a good trip last time out. I like his tactical speed, and I like the way he's been finishing off his races. I agree with all that stuff. I thought both he um, and the six in this race, hard love, I thought they both had chances. Ultimately, Dan, I just, I didn't like either one of them enough to put him on top. And so I'm going to stick with the chalk here in Bolshoi Ballet and see if he can rebound. 2561 for Mike, Bill Martin du jour for me. 5672 in the grade one, Belmont Derby. Good luck.